What's up, everybody? Welcome to Fully Alive, Season 1, Episode 8. I'm Jeremiah Osteen. And as, as you're coming on, just comment where you're watching from, share this broadcast, like, subscribe. And uh, it's been such a blessing to walk with you guys over the courses of these episodes. And uh, in this one, you know, it's going to be a little bit shorter, but I wanted to, yet again, this is another recorded one. I'm not yet live yet. Uh, maybe the last two episodes of the season will get live. At least one more we'll have live before we close out season one. But I just wanted to uh, kind of share some stories of the Lord coming in. I know we talked about union last time, but really this is the effect of union that I want to share. Uh, what happens when we do come into union and fellowship like that with the Lord and uh, what's possible. And so a few years back, well, a couple years ago, it, it, it had been a year after the Lord came in such a mighty move of his spirit in 2020 um, with us with Numenites and what the Lord was doing through us. And uh, a group of our friends, and I've shared the story before, uh, just on our YouTube channel itself, but a group of our friends came together. Uh, we would meet together, and we would just see the Lord coming in a mighty way. Well, anyway, a couple years ago, there was a fire conference happening at our church, and there was a group of evangelists that were there that were... Um, excuse me, that we're going out there every day. And uh, before the services, we began to, you know, reap a harvest of souls to proclaim the gospel, heal the sick. And one of the days we went out, and there was three of them that stuck around. Uh, this was on a Saturday afternoon, and, you know, the service wasn't until like 6, 7 o'clock, and it was like uh, maybe 2 p.m. because we went out in the morning to go witness. So anyway, a couple of them stuck around, and they had heard stories about what we were seeing. You know, during one of the uh, nighttime services of NUMA Encounter, when uh, our ministry put on the NUMA Encounter of 2020, one of the nights, uh, my brother ended up speaking, and while he was speaking, oil started coming out of the walls, and this was very distinct. It was a prophetic moment. Well, in other Numanites, oil began to come out from the back of the wall, and it began to continue to come. And it was, I, I guess, it was probably, I mean, it was higher than 15-foot ceilings. I mean, it was 20, maybe 30-foot ceilings, and way up at the top, oil was coming down. And, you know, we did at one point, you know, kind of wonder, I like, okay, you know, is this the Lord or is this like a leak or something? But we checked everything out and uh, we waited too because, you know, if it wasn't, then it would not be there. Like if it wasn't the Lord, it wasn't going to be there for long. And we waited it out and sure enough, you know, it would be fresh every time we would meet. And you could, you know, go swipe your hand across it it would smell like a beautiful heavenly fragrance of oil, and it was the consistency of oil. Nothing like you've ever smelt before. It was heavenly. And so anyway, these four evangelists, well, three evangelists, I was the, the fourth guy, but um, they wanted to see it. So we get up, uh, and I take them to the platform, and I show it to them, and they're you know blown away by it. And, and really the Lord, you know, already you could feel the presence of the Lord coming in just by me sharing with them and show, just by me showing them uh, the oil on the wall. And I want to read this verse before we go any further into the story. But in Malachi 3, verse 16, it says, Then those who fear the Lord spoke with one another. The Lord paid attention and heard them, and a book of remembrance was written before of those who fear the Lord and esteemed his name. And so whenever I began to share the story, it was like that verse came into manifestation where the Lord had this remembrance and he came in and descended on what he remembered. And so the story, and I'm just going to share the story 
important here is I began to share about what took place in 2020. And I told these guys, I said, me and my friends, we'd meet together. My brother was there, uh, John David, Adam, our, our wives at the time uh, as well. And none of us had kids at the moment, although uh, Adam and Dassey, I think, would be the first to have Elijah. But anyway, at that time, we didn't have any kids. And, um, and so we would come together and meet in our homes, and we would – you know, back in 2020, the economy was a lot different place than it is now. And uh, meat was actually pretty cheap. And so we bought steaks. We would grill out, you know, not every day, but like every Friday or something similar to that. And uh, we would grill and just hang out. And, you know, there would come a point in time, all, all of our conversations were surrounded by the Lord. We would talk about what the Lord was doing in us because we would spend on our own, we would spend extended time with the Lord. We were just seeking him and super hungry for the Lord and, and anything he had for us. And we were so desperate for awakening, for revival, for him. We were desperate for him. And we'd meet together, and somewhere around that meeting, we would just, everything would just shift. Where we would be in, you know, at that time, Adam's living room, we'd be in his living room and the glory of the Lord would just come in. And we would be crying out, shouting in tongues. We would be on the floor weeping before the Lord and encountering him in such a depth. And we would spend hours doing that together. And it got to the point, Pentecost Sunday of that year, where it, it transferred from just our living rooms to the church where that, the, the night before Pentecost Sunday, and this, uh, yet again, I've shared the story before in the full detailed stories on the YouTube page, but this is what I was sharing with those guys. Uh, it, I, it was in 2021, 2022, when I was sharing with, the, it's with these guys what happened in 2020, and I told them that you know the Lord would come in in such a great, mighty way and then it would happen, you know, then, you know, we were doing Numenites throughout the year and it would happen there. And then we would continue on. And I was just sharing all these things with these guys. And as I was sharing what the Lord was doing, the su supernatural manifestations that were occurring, how we would encounter the Lord, the weight of his glory. It was like the Lord remembered what had, had took place. The Lord remembered us. He, he remembered us. Our, my friend group, he remembered what took place there at the church. He remembered how we hungered and thirsted after him. And we ultimately saw a 30-day uh, outpouring in August of 2020, um, you know, started with uh, Numa Encounter and just took off into the August Awakening. And um, I was sharing it with these guys, and these guys, you know, such a weight came into that auditorium while we and we were the only four people in that room such a weight came in and we were all driven to the floor and i began to weep again just remembering what the lord had done and so thankful for what the lord has done and they for the first time were, were ignited with a hunger to see more and we all were experiencing him in, in various different ways to different degrees and um one of the manifestations that occurred is one of the guys began to play guitar, just grabbed a guitar off the stage, began to play. And this is so wild. My friend, the friend of mine that was the evangelist that I, I know better than the other two, he saw a vision of this glory cloud and he felt like it was real. Like all of us had our eyes closed, but he opened his eyes and saw this thick blanketed cloud come into the room and just sit on top of us. And what's insane about this story is that there was proof of this occurring because um, a family member of one of the guys had come in, I believe it was actually his family, had heard music, the music that the guy was playing. And they came in and were looking everywhere throughout the room. They looked, the speakers weren't on, nothing was going on. They even went, because we were on the stage, they went, and there's nothing to obscure the stage in the natural either. They came, and they went on the stage, and they didn't see anybody. 
They looked all over the stage and couldn't see anyone. We were enveloped in a haze of brilliant light, the cloud of glory we were enveloped in. And the Lord was just coming down. The joy of the Lord hit us. It was just a glory bomb that took place. And that that was the best way to describe it was a glory bomb took place in that moment. And I wanted to share this story with you because it's important. And I'm what, what I'm telling you is a, a testimony of a testimony. Is that I'm telling you the testimony of when I shared the testimony and what took place when I shared it. You know, and sometimes, and I just want you to be in a position to receive because when you often when you begin to share things like this that the Lord did and you honor him in fear and reverence for what he did, he comes in again. And the glory of the Lord might just start coming in your room, the presence of the Lord filling your room, driving you to the floor, the weight of him coming in, the weight of him coming in. And yeah, so it's really important and when we have these experiences and encounters with the Lord, that one, and this is goes without saying, but I should say it, we don't make theology based on our encounter or experience. However, when we see it biblically, we let what's in the Bible describe our experience, and then we can fully see the manifestation of it. Because there is an element of what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined what God has for those who uh, love him. And so uh, one one other verse I wanted to share, and then we'll close here in a few minutes here, is that um, this is, this is uh, John 14, verse 21. He who has my commandments and keep them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. I will come and manifest myself to him. So as one, you know, I am not like other guys who have seen, you know, John Kilpatrick saw quite a few years of an outpouring in Brownsville. Nathan Morris and him, Bay Revival, um, the Toronto Blessing for a few years, Bethel for years and years and years and years. Uh, some of these different things that really are revival in the earth. Um, so I, I'm not necessarily an expert, but from what I have experienced, just to kind of go back to the story of my friend group and I, you know, what we were experiencing, what we were encountering, and how we got there, and this is coming back in time into this verse, is that we were keeping the commandments. Every day we'd seek him. We'd spend extended time with him. We'd love one another as we were loved by the Father. We would preach the gospel. We were, we were actively every day, and we still do, but together in, in, a, in a corporate place, we would preach the gospel to the lost. We'd heal the sick on the streets. We'd see demons cast it out. And so we were obeying the command of the Lord to go into all the world. We were raising disciples even at a, at a young age. We were creating, we were making space for the glory of the Lord to come in and dwell. We were interceding for the loss. We were everything that we could get our hands on in Scripture to obey, we were obeying. We were giving it all. We were laying it all down. So I want to encourage you because we, we're at the year anniversary, uh, which was a couple few days ago, of the Asbury Revival, of the Asbury Awakening. that took place um, at the Asbury University. And I was privileged to be a part of that. And it was a different measure, uh, a different, I guess, manifestation of his presence than what we had experienced. Um, if I And I described it in my experience on my channel, but it was a sweeter, you know, not so heavy as it was sweet. And just a sweet presence of Jesus coming in. But what was that? What was taking place? They're obeying the commandments. They're seeking his face in simplicity. 
And it was super, super simple where we would just come together, meet together over a dinner, break bread with one another, and it would open up. And I found it so fascinating that what we were doing was literally what they were doing in the book of Acts. That daily they met together in their homes. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, the breaking of bread. That's what we were doing, and we saw numbers added. We saw people come into the kingdom. We saw people's lives forever transformed. And, you know, in different measures, we're still seeing that. And we, we've only gone from glory to glory in that, um, in knowledge, in, in knowing him. Now, we do long for even greater glory manifestations. And it's coming, and in some degrees already here. And we're going to see it take place. So I just want to encourage you. I really pray that this testimony, that the string of testimonies has blessed you. And I encourage you to seek him, to seek after him in hunger and in love with him, to see what he has to say in the scriptures, to see how when the priests dedicated the temple, they couldn't even stand to minister, to see how Ezekiel was grabbed up by his hair and taken into the heavens, to see these manifestations take place. To see all of the miracles that jesus did how he healed all who were oppressed by the enemy to see how an angel unlocked the prison door for peter and he walked through to see how paul and silas raised their voice in one accord and the the jail the jail cell shook and the whole jail uh came into the kingdom then the jail jail jailers Hallelujah, that word is getting me on a recording, praise the Lord. <laughs> but the they were born again, and, uh, and so that's a manifestation too, and we see all these different manifestations, water becoming wine, you know, the glory of the Lord coming in, different things John saw in Revelation. All of these are possible and are accessible because the veil's been torn. And what happened when the veil was torn is heaven can come. Heaven can come in. There's no, you know, there's no brass ceiling, as the old folks would say. Not on his end. If there was one, it was because of our understanding. Not on his end. And so we say, Lord, come. Lord, come in your might. Lord, we know you descended already, Holy Spirit, on the day of Pentecost. What we're saying, Lord, to come is come and make us aware. Make us aware of what's accessible what we can have now. Come in your glory. Reveal your glory. Let your glory stream through us. Let's experience you deeply in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for watching this broadcast. Uh, Share this with a friend. Uh, Let me know in the comments any testimonies. And uh, Excuse me. At this time, I want to give you the opportunity to give into our ministry. You could do so here, Venmo at Numa Glory, Cash App at Dollar Sign Numa Glory, PayPal at Jeremiah Osteen and Zellin Check. Uh, just go ahead and message me for that info. Yet again, this is going to Numa Nights. This is going to the media ministry and everything else we're called to do in the earth. So I thank you for that. I bless it, and I declare that it will come back a hundredfold into your hand. In Jesus' name. If you were hearing about Numa Nights and you're like, man, that's insane. What you were talking about, some of the things that took place. If you desire that to, to have that happen in your area, just comment glory. And uh, go ahead and just comment your information. That way we can connect. We can see that take place. Thank you guys so much for watching us, watching this broadcast, and I look forward to seeing you in the next Fully Alive.